Assembly Ribu, Assembly Ribu, Assembly Ribu. Hey, who never me? We just not be a one. Mrs. Cecilia, your mind, baby, a beef, a cost, a hot. A soft for a beefy. Politicians, a beefy. Musicians, a beefy. A comfort, a beefy. Bloggers, a beefy. Now, Cecilia, Alban Smana, Kensford, Bagben. Ask Bagbeg, Speaker of Parliament. <laughs> he is on heat. We are responding to Nana Asanti Bediotio, Secretary to the President. Statement or the Bible. I think I already all warning a Parliament clerk. No, it was young. Bagbeg, what you want to say? I did all my own. A buga buga. You have to go deep. Gumbi, a wo. Me di head you could black. Aha, a trans GH. Afrix mobile money app and I'm recommend the amount. Who UK, Canada, US, any part of the world I will be able to be to me as a Niska, a BPM, a Wagana, or move rate, a yes from Kokra. And you just somewhere want to say, what sign up with the promo code Trends GHR? Well, first transaction I will be able to say above $150, we need $20, and no a bonus. So, for sure, what else? And it's much more. So, I'll be able to up with the promo code Trends GH. Ebu san fi ni yembo ren se mene mu. Endra oba kaya me di ni usi bi ebre o. A ya no. E ya nanado dan kwe kufu adon. Ne secretary. A santi bedi e tu. Onu di oche u se. When it comes to this anti-LGBT kyo be o na. E ya clerk of parliament. Mene mbo ni humu su. Kwa so odes be o no. Ebe bre nanado dan kwa e kufu adon. Now attorney general no so babo nti be chile mu se. Sensa. E ya anti-LGBT kyo be o no. Aman fo bi de kwa kwa ta no. Ebe ya sa nanado dan kwe kufu adon. Mene mfa nan sa ensha be o na se. On ken. Se court the ruling eba ba abwanteng. Na wey na Alban Smana Babin, Speaker of Parliament, ono de en samu wey ya eko suni na ano na oni Ghana oko conference bi endra eno obedru ye. Wey na si yo, wate en samu eko su. Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin, ochre mwa, this is not the first time wana na do dan kwe kufu ado. When it comes to Bill Bia, on peso ode na sa ebe shasye. Ne Speaker of Parliament, sanya wate ne bo a o build a point eno. Ebu siya, yente wey mbra, na fi. I want all of you to lend me your ears. The statement I'm going to formally deliver is so crucial to the existence of not just the institution of parliament, but of democracy in this country. And so I want to plead with all of you to pay attention. The good people of Ghana, I'm sure, will pay attention. Honorable members, I address you today amid circumstances that profoundly challenge the core principles of our constitutional democracy. At the outset, I must express my profound regret concerning the conduct displayed by the President following Parliament's successful unanimous passage of the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill 2024. The behavior exhibited by the President in refusing to accept the transmission of this bill not only deviates from established democratic practices, but also undermines the spirit of cooperative governance and mutual respect for the arms of government. This is a principle that forms the cornerstone of our political system. Such actions, if left unchecked, risk setting dangerous precedents that threaten the integrity and functionality of our democratic institutions. To situate this statement in the appropriate context, it is crucial to acknowledge a disturbing pattern emerging from the president, which points to a concerning disregard for the foundational principles enshrined in the Constitution 1992. This pattern has once again been made evident in the president's recent refusal to accept the presentation of the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill. The recent move is not isolated. It forms part of a series of actions that undermine the legislative process. As you may recall, 
I address this House on the 22nd of December 2023 in a formal statement. The purpose of that statement was to draw your attention to the President's refusal to assent to four critical bills passed by this House. Three private members' bills and one public bill. During that address, I underscored the troubling nature of the President's justification for his actions, or rather, the lack thereof, particularly highlighting that his failure to ascend on grounds of alleged unconstitutionality paradoxically stood in violation of the very constitution he invoked. Despite the gravity of this matter, it is disheartening to note that there has been no progress in rectifying the situation concerning those significant pieces of legislation. They remain in a state of limbo, unretained to Parliament, detained by him, and unacted upon following the President's communication, which lacked substantial legal justification. This ongoing scenario poses a grave threat to our legislative authority and, by extension, the democratic principles we try to uphold. The implications of such executive actions extend far beyond the immediate legislative items at hand. They erode the foundational checks and balances that our forebearers painstakingly established to ensure a vibrant and functioning democracy. When important legislative work, the product of rigorous debate and consensus building within this House, is disregarded without just cause, it not only disrespects the legislative branch, but also disenfranchises the citizens that we are sworn to serve. This blatant disregard for legislative processes and constitutional mandates risk setting a perilous precedent that could weaken the very fabric of our governance structure. Honorable members, on 19th March 2024, my attention was drawn to a letter issued by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Asante Bediotu, addressed to the clerk to Parliament, which letter is clearly, in my opinion, contemptuous of Parliament. The letter outlined that the clerk ought to, and I quote, cease and desist, unquote, from attempting to transmit the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill 2024 to the President for necessary action in accordance with the provisions of our Constitution. In the said letter, the Executive Secretary indicated that the Office of the President was aware of two pending applications for an order of interlocutory injunction seeking to restrain the clerk and from transmitting the bill to the President. It further indicated that the Honorable Attorney General had on 18th March 2024 informed the President that he had received the two applications and had advised the President not to take any step in relation to the bill until matters raised by the suit are determined by the Supreme Court. As a result, the President, via the Executive Secretary, conveyed, conveyed to the clerk that it was unable to accept transmission of the bill. Honorable Members, my attention has also been drawn to the 18th March 2024 letter from the Honorable Attorney General being referred to by the Executive Secretary to the President, Nana Asante Bidio Chu above. In the said letter, that is the letter from the Attorney General, I note that the Attorney General used the phrase, and I quote, I will respectfully advise that a decision to assent to the bill be made after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction, unquote, and not 
an advice to the president not to receive the bill from parliament. It is therefore interesting that in view of this clear and unambiguous advice from the Attorney General, which I disagree with to the President, the President has rather chosen to accept the bill. Speaker of Parliament, where you the introduction? Now, who on my mobile video, the mine Kennedy, I compare with Japan or no? I don't know, yes, you know. Alex, I find your marking. I on also now, I was on the day now on an oh, yes, you yes, you know, just a majority leader at a Japan Bunichi. When a smart babbin, it was young speaker of parliament, which you say. Say, say, and another down quick for our office of Buma and they are almost all my ready. Say, or monono, ever call that area. No, since I told the general, or no, they say, or be this out to move to moon someone or echo quarter, or no, so ma or my aware say, or be so then another down quick for our ministers now or so among vetty or mono echo court, and no tea action by the parliament in Betty. Neho and a bagwin, or shout to move. Remember, my question, I'm going to say, hey, say, say, I'm going to say, the power of the people is stronger than the people in power. The president's refusal to accept the transmission of the bill is, by all accounts, not supported by the constitutional and statutory provisions that guide our legislative process. The constitution clearly delineates the steps to be followed once a bill has been passed by parliament mandating the transmission of the bill to the president for assent or rejection. Therefore, the refusal to even accept the bill for consideration falls outside the legal bounds established by our constitutional framework. If the president has concerns about the bill presented, the president refers the bill with the concerns for further consideration of parliament. When that is done by parliament and it is represented to the president, the president is by law bound to assent to the bill. That is what is in the constitution. Ghana the president has no power of veto. Yeah. Honorable members, this house has been duly served with two injunction applications in respect of the bill. The application is titled Richard Sky versus the Parliament of Ghana and the Attorney General. And the second, Dr. Amanda Odoy versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General. The Executive Secretary to the President noted in his letter that, and I quote, it is settled law that during the pendency of an interlocutory injunction application, the status quo ante ought to be preserved and no action be taken that will result in prejudicing the injunctive relief sought and undermining the authority of the court, unquote. And reject the attempts by the executive secretary of the president through his contemptuous letter to instruct the clerk to parliament, an officer of parliament whose position is recognizably under the constitution. We shall not cease and desist. Yeah. Honorable member, I'm watching you. And I hear what you say. Be that as it may, honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the courts titled Robson Nelson Eche K. Dafiamapo versus, versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General. Suit number J1 slash 12 slash 2024, which process was served on the 19th, that is yesterday, March 2024, and an injunction motion on notice seeking to restrain the speaker 
from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. Honorable members, in the light of this process, the House is unable to continue to consider the nominations of His Excellency the President. To use the language of the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, quote, in the spirit of upholding the rule of law, unquote, until, until after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court. Honorable members, this is the precedent that is being set by His Excellency the President for all Ghanaians to follow. So any matter that comes before Parliament, any Ghanaian can issue a writ and follow it with an application for injunction. And that is enough to injunct Parliament from proceeding with the consideration of the business in the House. Yeah. Honourable members, I thank you all for your attention and may God bless our homeland Ghana. It was when to say that you are going to move Bag when I watch them, or send another down quick for all. Say, say no, Pesso, or mine, or your corner, dear. I almost why you ready. Say, say, and another. I do not want Cassano or Vetsin Minister, so. Say, say, and yet, bag winch the one. Every Ghanaian piano, or all right. Say, Bibi, air cost or parliamenta. What do you amu, a bell cockot? Nessa wunya, the amu cockota, Bibi or more ye, in regards to Bibi, I order more aqua parliament now. Omo beja e juma no. Tell us say court any ruling e baba. Into say Attorney General, any afi Secretary to the President, Asante Bede to sign no omo kan diya. Any no omo kan ya no. The same thing. Ena Roxen Dafia Mepo NDC omo MP. No no so I can't ano. So we say Sam George. On first la unko court. So they say on first la unko court for them. Omo say. Internet outages, no. Say, it's so so. Almost say, it's submarine bina. Ha ha ha, crash no. I feel the obvious to you, yes, as a wasso. Yay! A coin man, no. Mo gumbi. Makrabo. Sending money abroad just got a whole lot easier with AfriX. Our slick app makes international transfer crazy fast and super secure. Just tap a few buttons. Money sent across the board in a minute. One magic of AfriX is that you can add your debit card or load money to your AfriX wallet right in the app. Then send those funds to your recipient overseas straight to their bank account at lightning speed and zero fees. You can earn a one-time bonus of $20 if you refer your friends and they send up to $150. Whether you're in the USA, Canada, Europe or anywhere in the world, AfriX. Best rates at no cost with no hidden fees.